Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. Here, the purpose is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. Today's conversation is a casual conversation with David Bowie. I originally connected with him a few weeks ago, and I still just feel like I don't know that much about him. And because of that, I thought it'd be good to have a follow-up conversation, just a casual conversation with him. My intention is to eventually do a deeper channeling with him, uh, a trans channel style. My transformative channel is a unique style of channeling that I do. And if you're interested in learning more about that or seeing that, take a look at some of my Prince playlist channels. All right. So, David, I would love to invite you in. If you could come on over. Oh, here, okay. Thank you. Oh, right away, I feel energy. And I'm going to ask you to um, just, uh, maybe I'll ask you a few questions and you can, here, let me just kind of adjust my chair here. And you can um, give me some uh, background, help me to get to know you a bit. <clears throat> okay. All right, does that sound good? Mm, quite. <laughs> quite. Quite good. All right. Um, the thing I notice about you is your appearance, is your features. And that's the thing, when I think of David Bowie, that's quite frankly, that's what I think of is your appearance and the way that you look, your unique looks. And... I can relate to having unique looks as well because, you know, I have platinum blonde hair. It's natural. Some people don't think it is, but it is. These eyebrows and stuff and eyelashes, totally makeup. Everything's white on this face. In fact, I should show you, take a picture and show you. But um, I actually have a form of albinism, ocular albinism, where the, the lenses in my eye are really light. I'm really sensitive to light, so when I do some channeling outside and I do some videos outside, I have to wear sunglasses because otherwise I'm just really squinty and it's uncomfortable and it can cause headaches for me later in the day, so I have to be careful. But so I understand about, about what it's like to look different, be different, and you looked very different yourself as well. Um, he says, yes, but my eyes aren't blue. He says, your eyes are quite blue. Rather, yeah, he says, your eyes are quite blue. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, they are, yeah. Um, all right, so your unique look, um, that's what I think of. And along with that then, I only, I've heard a few things about you, um, most recently, I was actually on a soccer weekend with my kids and or a soccer tournament thing. And I was outside the hotel and I was coming into the doorway and then the entrance, there was music playing as I was approaching, you know, the outside kind of music. And it was, let's dance, put on your red shoes and dance the blues. That song, that's yours. <laughs> that's like the only song I know of yours. I don't even know the whole thing. I just know the, you know. Um, the tagline and stuff. I don't even know the proper words to say that, you guys. I'm not a music person, so forgive me. Refrain, maybe it's the refrain or something. He's laughing at me. He's like, <laughs> he says, wow, you, you, know, you really don't have a clue. Oh, Prince was right. <laughs> yeah. So in the afterlife, you connected with Prince. He says, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a mutual respect you know, amongst, uh, he's an artist, he says, he's an artist, truly an artist. Oh, that's great. Okay, interesting. Um, so when I've seen clips of you, like when other people have shared, you know, clips and things, I have a, a friend of mine who's a fan of yours, and so every once in a while she will share like a, an image or a clip. Um, and I don't usually see you playing uh, instruments like guitar or piano, do you play? He says, yeah, I play, yeah. He says, yeah, I play. I'm not like Prince, he says, but uh, yeah, I play. Yeah, I play. Okay, guitar, I see guitar. <clears throat> I can play the piano, he says. I can play the piano. Okay. And um, he says, I can also play drums. Looks like he can play drums. He says, but uh, although um, 
that wouldn't be my first choice. Those aren't my first choice. That the drums aren't my first choice. Um, I'm interested in the theatrical uh, parts of your performances. That that's kind of what you're known for. I think. Um, I had a friend that kind of schooled me a little bit. She just said, oh, David Bowie, very theatrical, very known for, you know, the makeup and the costumes and all that. And I guess, I don't know if I remember that. Um, I guess you were really big in the 70s. That's what she had said. And that's the decade that I was born in. So I really wasn't, you know, following the disco or the, the music or anything at that time. But... I'm curious about that. There's also a term or a, like a character, a fictional character that you created, um, a Ziggy Stardust. Is that a thing? Because somebody mentioned that. My husband, I think, actually said Ziggy Stardust. I said, what? Who? And it's like one of your, he said it's one of David Bowie's kind of characters or performers. Can you talk to me a little bit about that or help me understand that those parts of you, that part of you, that artistic, theatrical? I think that's really cool. Very interesting to me. He says, yeah, Ziggy was sort of like an alter ego of sorts, but he caused more mischief than he was worth. Oh, okay, can you expand on that? It was sort of like um, pre-video. Uh, before the whole MTV, just before the whole MTV generation, which is your generation, I think. He says to me, which is your generation, I think, would be. There was this incredible opening for performance art, for true performances, where it's like a, a theatrical set and it's like theater, theater of music, and to create a whole stage presence around this character was something that was really fun for me. It was something that I really enjoyed and it was kind of out there. I mean, for some people, it was really hard to uh, comprehend or wrap your head around it and maybe too artistic, you know, interpretation. And, you know, art isn't for everyone. It's not the same to everyone. People see different things and it's not really for me to tell them how they should receive the art, but I think that some of it definitely gets lost in translation, but it was definitely a time when um, there's a lot of experimenting with alter realities. And I think that was when people started to say, he says, He's talking about the alien thing. People would refer to me as like an alien or something. And in part because of this alter reality that I really tried to create on stage, you know, and part of it is to get people out of their minds to expand their consciousness, you know, their thinking, to get them out of their everyday day-to-day -day lives and get them more into creative space, which you know, that's, as you know, that's how you manifest. That's how you make your life what it is. And so I played several different characters. And Ziggy Stardust was one of my characters. And there were others. There were more. There were more as well. And uh, you take them on and just become... They, they create kind of an energy of their own, you know? And people might not be able to relate to other people, but they can relate sometimes to characters, you know, like in a book or in a movie or that kind of a, there's just a connection that people can create or make for themselves. And it, it's sort of like fantasy, you know, it, it, re it can relax people into, it can relax people into a place where they might consider things they wouldn't have normally considered you know, you talk about dreams and pursuing, you know, goals in your life and setting goals and manifesting. You talk about that. And when you talk about that, that's right in the line with the whole point of fantasy, the whole point of artistic expression, the whole point of the experience of coming to a show and a performance and becoming part of the performance and identifying with the character, whether it's a movie or a stage show or what have you. But what what you relate to.
and through the music that that is a part of me and what I wanted to accomplish by the shows that I did. And I know some of it seems real out there. And, you know, it's called all sorts of names. And, but none of that really affects you because you sort of feel like a misfit. And I related to those who felt on the outside, you know, like a misfit. And I, I capitalized on that. I made it something that was acceptable, socially acceptable and cool to be an outcast. And that part of this, you know, as I look back on human life experience, that part is really a joy. It's a great joy to know that as a, looking back and having this perspective as, as we're talking now, I have a great sense of accomplishment about that in particular about breaking some barriers and actually not even it's not even so much as breaking barriers it's more making something that wasn't cool really cool you know really cool to be a freak really cool to be a misfit outcast really cool to make it that and to lead that now that's a movement that's a movement so then parts of ourselves that we feel uh, ashamed of or left out of or, or don't understand it gives an opportunity to bring that in to the wholeness of ourselves. And that part now in retrospect is so much more than what I could have bargained, you know, so much more than what I could have planned for or beyond the, any initial intent. I just wanted to bring people in and allow them to get outside of themselves to expand their views on things and open their minds and open their hearts to what's possible. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, David, <laughs> that's incredible. <laughs> it is, um, this is a dialogue or a conversation style channel for those who are watching. So I do my best to select the uh, words uh, that represent the energy that he's sharing. And he kind of, he speaks and he, he is, kind of um it's not like a, a block of words I would say like a paragraph or things that you share with me it feels like a understanding that you share and I'm trying to translate it articulate it into proper words that would fit what David Bowie you would actually have said and I think I got a couple of the words accurately but not all so that just know that the dialogue that I just shared with you was all David Bowie and it was my interpretation as a channel of the energy of the essence of what you're trying to share and some of the specific words are accurate and right on but not all of them are words that you would necessarily have chosen I want to say that the conversation style gives me an opportunity this casual style to to get used to your presence your energy as a spirit and understand you also then as a person how you would relate to others and share like in an in interview. And then he's saying, I was quite private, actually. Once, I, you know, once you have a family and things and you settle into a style of life, you, then you don't really, you know, the things that you did in your youth or the parts of you that people may know you for, is just not, a, it's just, it's kind of like I've been there and I've done that already. And I don't mind when people are, you know, great fans and they really love the work early on, especially like you mentioned during the 70s or during the, the MTV music generation, you know, and the punk, sort of punk era. You, Bridget, would probably say that it's more of a, in America anyway, like a punk. We had it in the, you know, in Britain too. There was definitely a... A tendency toward that and you know the outward appearance and looking different and kind of wild and that is uh, part of life you didn't really get into that though no that really wasn't necessarily my thing no but um, I definitely appreciate people who can express themselves and find ways to do that in healthy ways you know that's hey that's cool that's artistic um, do you have any tattoos by the way he says uh, one where he's trying to show me like a story almost like I almost got one or I got one or part of one 
and then I finished it or something. It kind of seems like a two-parter. It almost looks like a like a triangle symbol or a Superman symbol or something. I'm not sure what that represents. And kind of like a cross or a religious thing, but it's not intended to necessarily. It's Wow, you feel very spiritual to me. So uh, talking about this, all of a sudden, I feel like very spiritual. Were you very conscious, like spiritually conscious or aware during your human life? Well, I don't know about that. I'd like to think so. I always felt a connection to a higher power, uh, a source, uh, some would call God. And I definitely believe that there was more than just myself when I was on stage, more of a, you know, energy flowing through me. And you would maybe use the word, you would use the term channeling or being a channel. That's not what necessarily I would say, but I feel, I definitely feel connected to a higher, higher energy. And that is what I would give credit for my creativity. And that within myself as well, the desire to make really make an opportunity that is so pleasing to the eyes, you know, very aesthetically pleasing, a show that would activate all the senses and part of the part of one of the senses that you as human human beings as you have is that connection to spirit that spiritual energy that vibration you would call it vibration i would say frequency but that to tune into that and activate all the human senses and then including that spiritual link it just that's what pushes it over the edge you know that's what makes it so special and so spectacular for people to experience the shows the performances the live performances and you get you only get that from a live show you really do there's there's nothing like a live show now movies in part can also create some of this they bring you through the story and the story is so powerful that's when people change that's when you change you transform because you have an experience through the storytelling and that's the part where you grow you change you grow you're different when you come out of that movie or you're different when you leave that that performance but there's nothing like that that experience and the spiritual aspects of it are definitely clear and later on yeah and yes i meditated people would ask you that i'm sure what did i do for spirituality uh, yes i meditated i spent time in what would be meditation and I really believed in a higher power and us as human beings, when you're in a body as a person, accessing that higher power from inside of you. I really believed in that and I still do believe in that, of course. Of course I know better now, you know. So what do you know now, David? What part of this afterlife and being a spirit do you really are you just like, wow, blown away by? How beautiful everything is. You know, nature, you've talked about this, nature and the natural surroundings of Earth. It, it really is just so beautiful. It's like a paradise. Earth really, truly is a paradise. Most people don't recognize it. But in the afterlife, looking at earth as a whole and the natural beauty of it is just that's something you can't there's no comparison to that as a spirit as you know there's not it's it's an energy and you don't hold a flower you don't smell a flower you don't touch the water the water doesn't feel the same you can't feel that because there's no body to feel and that's that's kind of sad there's a bit of a sadness i think about not realizing how incredible the landscape the human experience is because of the landscape the natural surroundings how really beautiful that is uh, and not realizing that that's one thing that i would i would want people to know that okay well how does it feel to be spirit though you know without a body then you know, you're, I mean, how does that feel? 
it's difficult to translate into feeling because as you know, there's not really a, a feeling, uh, there's not really a feeling def definition here, something that would be relatable aside from energy, which is basically everything. Everything is energy, all is energy. So as I'm speaking to you, I'm simply connecting through you and you are choosing the words in alignment with the vibration. That's how I'm connecting with you. As other spirit try to get closer to the earthy, earthly vibration, which is a lower, uh, uh, I want to say octave, but I can't quite understand what he's trying to tell me. A lower, it's like a lower frequency. Um, they can relate more and they'll come closer and then they kind of step back into the memory or the shell of the human personality or body energy and then, then I think it might be easier for you actually to connect with them in that way for people to recognize them in that way but for me I really I truly enjoy being spirit I truly enjoy being simply energy the closest comparison would be light that would truly be like the light of the sun as it's coming up light would be the closest comparison. I, I truly enjoy it. I enjoy it. And, and if there's a feeling or an emotion that would be closely related, it would be bliss, a bliss energy, just a relaxing, flowing bliss. And he, I'm feeling it. I can feel it. And he's making me, um, he's giving it to me in my throat chakra for the communication channel, which is interesting. Um, and then he says, anybody can communicate. Anybody. Anybody can communicate. You know, people ask often, I, I hear, I know, ask um, if you, do you hear me? Do, do others hear do, when, when someone that used to be a person becomes the fullest extension of God, of creator, of universe, when they become universe? Can they still hear me speak or can they hear me? Do they understand? Can they feel what I feel? Do they know me when I speak to them? And the answer to that question is definitely yes. We don't lose our ability to connect. In fact, it's more enhanced. And so you as a human may feel very limited in your connection, in your ability to communicate or send message. And it's not like mail. It's not tangible and geographic it's transcendent and that ascension is part of the nature of being a, a spirit and not being a person and so we don't have the limits you have so yes we always can hear or sense or in your words feel whatever it is that you are going through moving through if you're talking to us whether you're writing it or thinking it or saying it uh, we definitely we um, a spirit most certainly can communicate and connect with you. In, in that regard, we can he receive those messages from you. Yes, very. I think it's important for people to recognize that, to understand that, to know that. That is profound. That is profound. That is the best description I have ever heard. That is the best description I have ever heard of spirit communication. That is incredible that thank you wow that is oh my gosh that was awesome that was incredible so did you hear that so when you want to know hey um somebody that you loved or you know a loved one someone a family member or someone that you care deeply about who is now not a person anymore they're full-on spirit energy they can feel hear and sense you all the time because that's how they evolve it's not about you evolving to be able to reach them. They receive everything that you send, whether whatever kind of messages you send, whether you write it, whether you speak it, whether you hear it, or whether you see, you know, sense it, feel it, or think it, they receive it. The tricky part, I think, and would you agree? He said, yes, I know exactly what you're feeling about this. He's like, yes, Bridget, I know exactly where you're going with this. Is as a human, the interpretation, the receivership, receiving, the receiving, the understanding, the information back, the clarity, the guidance, the, the knowing. 
And there's so much resistance between the human body and the full ascension of spirit and the spirit in ourselves that there's a lack of understanding and that creates some barriers to receiving. However, I fully believe as a person in a human body that we have the ability to receive. Everybody has the ability to receive the messages back and the awareness and the understanding and the sensing of the connection to spirit. I believe that 100%. That's exactly why I do Above Life Channel. He just listens to me and he nods his head. That's what the purpose is. And he says, indeed it is. Indeed it is. Thank you, David. Let me just thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and he's like, he's been leaning back like this whole time. He's been leaning back and, and he talks like this and he leans back in the chair and he just, his hands are kind of like this and he just, he feels like this. This is how he feels when I see him in an energy body. And he just looks like a light body. Um, he's got a white shirt on. It looks like he's got like a vest. I can't tell if it's black leather. I don't think it's black leather, but it's black. It kind of looks almost like a tuxedo vest, like a nice white shirt and a tuxedo vest thing. And he's got these black boots on, black pants. The pants are fitted, they're straight. Um, they don't look necessarily like dress pants. They might be like a, if they are a dress pant, they're a straight dress pant. Like they don't have pleats or anything like that. They're straight, like a metrosexual look. <laughs> and he's got boots on. They're not cowboy boots, they're not dressy boots. They're almost like a work boot kind of thing. Not a Doc Martin. Not that big of a sole, but um, like a boot, like that you would tie up, just so you know. And they're above the ankle, they're not shoes, they're boots. So. He's, kind of, he's just smiling at me, he's like. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for being here. And thank you for being here. Thank you for watching this, this casual conversation with David Boy as I get to know him. I don't really know him. And I've tried not to look up anything about him or research anything about him. Like I have a friend I mentioned that's a fan and she from time to time will post videos. And just after I did my first channel with you, I watched one of your vid a video, just a short like two minute clip of a stage performance. And that was it. And you were just singing with somebody. I think it was with Tina Turner. Actually, you were singing with Tina Turner and singing some kind of um, oldie, like an old song or something. Um, and that was it. And I thought, oh yeah, David Bowie. And then I saw an image of a quote um, that she also posted um, that I shared at Above Life Channel because it came up right after I did the original um, Connection Channel with you. So, wow, this is great, isn't it? It's interesting to meet people like this and especially artists, he's so artistic. And I, I think that's really interesting. That's an interesting part of him. So. I will um, do a session with you again and uh, definitely ask you some of the questions that some of the, the fans, the people that love you and know you so much. In fact, I had somebody who sent a, just an incredible, wonderful, wonderful questions on the last video. Thank you for that. I have them. I'm going to use them in a transformative channel session is my intent. So watch for that in the future. This is Bridget with Above Life Channel. Remember the purpose here is to inspire your spirit. I hope we did that today. It is your life, so live it. Be sure to like and share this video with other people that you know would love to watch it. And don't forget to subscribe. Click that red bell to make sure that you never miss a new weekly channel. Thanks for being here.